there. It's me again. It's Willem. And so, uh, a few weeks ago, actually, I don't know why I took this long to review it, but I read the new Spy School Project X book. And if you've been, if you've seen this channel before, or have been a subscriber, you would know that I reviewed the previous two books, Spy School Etsy and Spy School Revolution. And therefore, I am going to review this one because I want to. So, first of all, I'll take a look at the majesty of this. Anyway, um, so Spy School Project X. So, my feelings on this book are a bit mixed, though they're more generally on the positive side. So, um, a major, like, major spoiler alert for this. Like, I'm not gonna do, it like, a spoiler-free segment or anything. I'm just gonna get right into those, uh, sweet spoilers here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, really, my basic opinion on this book is that it's, like, great or has the potential to be great, but it has some pretty big flaws to it. So, it's kind of like a lot of things to come out in 2022. So, we're, let's get started with the stuff that I wasn't particularly fond of, because it's always nice to get the good stuff out uh, last, so you're left with good stuff. Okay, so the first thing I wasn't the biggest fan of was some of the childish humor. Some of the, uh, some of the jokes in the book are, like, funny, they're nice, and on par with the rest of the series, but then some of the other humor just kind of fell, felt... A bit childish, but it could possibly be that I've grown past the series since I'm 14 now, and it's intent, and I'm reading YA and adult books, and it's intended for middle grade audiences. But still, this feels more childish than the rest of the series. There's also like the whole like if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Like I I get that message. It's a nice like, simple message, but like like we learn that's like. Uh, something that they would tell us in kindergarten. I, I don't know. It just felt just kind of on the nose. Um, the second thing I wasn't the biggest fan of was the plot line. It just felt thin. It felt uh, thin is the best way to describe it. So the other books, they have plot lines like the first one has like Ben gets recruited to spy school and finds out he's bait to catch a double agent or. Murray offers to lead Ben and his friends to the leadership of Spider, but they're betrayed and have to survive in hostile territory. And this one is just, like, assassins and conspiracy theorists are out to get Ben, so they have to, like, av just avoid them for the whole book using... Like, the main gimmick of the book is just them switching modes of transportation. Like, there, there were already rumors that the book was going to take place on a train, but, like... When, like, the main gimmick of the book is just them using different ways to move. Like, it just felt a very, like, just very thin. Like, the whole plot is just them avoiding people. So, the third thing that I didn't, actually, this might be one of my biggest problems with the book, is how they brought back Joshua Halal. So, Joshua is... A was a pretty big villain in the first seven books. Then he fell off the Eiffel Tower and supposedly died, and I have no idea why. So, like, I'm, I'm either thinking they should have just... Mr. Gibbs, Mr. Gibbs. Hi, by the way. Uh, you're, I don't think you're going to be watching this, but if, if you are, hi. Um, just, I felt like Joshua should have either not been brought back. I mean, how the heck did would he even survive? He has to be, like, full, like... Like, his ratio of robot to human right now is, like, 90 to 10. So, either that or they could have at least given him something to do. Like, just, I really did not like the way his return was executed. Basically, like, so it said that Joshua and Warren and Ashley were back. And I was like, yes, they're back. He's alive. And then guess what his primary role was in the book? He just chase them for 300 pages with no speaking lines. Like, I think the only time he talks is when he says the word wait. It's like, that's it? 
he's been presumed dead for three books, and it's just like, oh, he's back. Oh no, he's chasing us, let's go. It's like, yeah, it, it, I think it could have been interesting if he couldn't speak anymore, or couldn't really articulate thinking anymore because of his injuries. But if so, then that should have been explained, which it wasn't. So I presume that that wasn't the attention. Um, also, like, what happened to him and Ashley? Like, I don't even remember if that was explained in at the end of the book. So the next thing is that the story just starts off too fast. It's like a few pages in and just, oh, the, the school campus gets blown up and they have to go. Like, I know... Uh, Mr. Gibbs probably intended for it to feel like that, like it just got off to a really quick start, but just because he intended that doesn't mean I have to like it. It just felt very, it just felt too fast sometimes. Then, here's another thing that I think um, Stuart intended that I'm not, that I wasn't fully on board with, was the ending. It was just very unresolved, and it was very loosely resolved ending like it was barely even an ending just yeah like I did like the two choices thing with the ending I thought that was nice but I didn't like how it just left most things unresolved like their conspiracy is still out there uh, like they haven't even brought Murray to prison yet I d we don't know what happened to Joshua and Ashley to my memory it's just yeah and then the last thing problem I had was Mike's characterization. He just came off as kind of rude sometimes. And also, yeah, I know this is very realistic, but his whole, like, Trixie, Mike romance thing was just cringy, which is what it would actually be like in real life, but I don't, I still don't like it. So, and there's, he, so Mike just comes off, just comes across as kind of rude sometimes. You, you never really think that they're, that they've been friends since kindergarten. So, now let's get into the actual good stuff, because it's more, it, that's just more fun, generally. So, uh, first thing I like was Erica's character development, and the, his, her relationship with Ben, that was nice in the book. Uh, Erica gets some good character development. Um, then, I also like the action, which, Spy School at Sea is my favorite book. Uh, and that was largely because of how creative the action sequences were. Um, this, the action in this book doesn't quite live up to that, but it's still nice and entertaining. And my personal favorite was when, uh, Ben shot a refrigerator at people. That was, that was quite creative. <laughs> um, uh, next thing I liked is that someone finally shut Cyrus up. Then the next thing I liked... Uh, whereas the, like, crazy conspiracy theories going on, like the Flambonian, I actually did find really funny. And the fact that it's not too far away from what people believe in real life, I don't know whether or not that's funny or terrifying. Um, another thing I liked was, first of all, character returns from previous books, and also just callbacks to previous books. Uh, there were a lot of references to things that happened in previous books. And a lot of characters came back, like Chip and Jawa and Cyrus and Joshua and Warren and Ashley were completely absent for, um, completely or almost absent for the, for the last two books. Also, Professor Crandall, he was my personal favorite character return. And the principal actually gets something to do briefly in the book, which I loved. And... Also, I, the one I never at all expected was the assassin from spy, the original Spy School book. I did, I did not expect him to come back at all. It was also kind of cool to find out his name. Then the last thing that I'm going to, that uh, the last notable thing that I really liked was just kind of overall the vibe of it. I just, just, the whole series just has this vibe that I like. Like I'm always on board with reading one of the new books. It always keeps me hooked. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Spy School Project X. I, what I call the post-Spider era, so these 
previous three books after Spice Blue British Invasion. Um, it's, I think the best way, to, the best thing to compare it to is the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4. You know, the, like, the main threat that's been built up across the whole series has already been taken out. So it's just gonna get kind of messy when they have to try and, uh, or when Mr. Gibbs tries to create new storylines from individual characters. So I think I've overall liked this post Spider era so far. I think I, I, Spy School Revolution is pretty high up there, and Spy School at Sea is my favorite of the books. But this one I think is more on the, in the middle of how I'd read the books. Just kind of in the middle, you know. It has some really good stuff and some things I just w did not fully like. So those are my thoughts. I'd give this book like. 7.5 or 8 out of 10, which is good. I, I like, I have, a, like, generous rating system. So, yeah, I um, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Make sure to like and subscribe and gaze at this beautiful